Hello friends, good morning. In my last class, I had started with the topic factors affecting the performance of distance relays. First factor I had explained was effect of source impedance to line impedance ratio. I had explained the effect as well as I had taken one numerical on that. Today, I will explain the second factor that is DC offset of the fault current. So before explaining this factor, I would like to explain how to find the setting of the relay from the secondary side of CT and PT. Normally, we set the relay and we explain the setting from primary side of the CT and PT, that is from the line side. But relay is located on the secondary side of PT and CT, so we must know how to transform this primary side setting into the relay side setting. So, let us say CT ratio is I1 by I2. PT ratio is V1 by V2. The primary side setting ZL is reach of the relay or impedance setting of the relay from primary side. It is V1 upon I1 ZNS that is impedance setting or reach of the relay from secondary side that is V2 upon I2. So this can be written as V2 upon V1 upon I2 upon I1 into V1 upon I1. So this V1 upon I1 is nothing but Setting of the relay from primary side multiplied by I1 upon I2 into V2 by V1. So, this is nothing but CT ratio upon PT ratio. So, impedance setting or reach of the relay from relay side that is secondary side of the CT and PT is equal to reach of the relay or impedance setting from primary side multiplied by CT ratio upon PT ratio. So, whenever CT ratio and PT ratio are given, we have to compute the setting of the relay from the secondary side that is relay side. So, first I will explain in brief what is DC offset of the fault current. You may be familiar with this DC offset of fault current. So, this is the short circuit current when it is symmetrical. This positive half cycle, negative half cycle, they are equal in magnitude. Peak value is IM. Now, when DC offset is present, it is exponentially decaying and in worst condition, it can go up to peak value of symmetrical component of the fault current. So, when symmetrical fault current is there, it is combination of symmetrical fault current and DC offset. So, the waveform, the resultant waveform will be like this. So, overall magnitude of this asymmetrical fault current is higher than that of the symmetrical fault current and mathematically it is obtained by this equation square of symmetrical fault current plus square of DC offset of the fault current and complete square root. Obviously, symmetrical fault current is more than symmetrical component of the fault current. Now, let us consider this simple system, two sections AB and BC. Relay R is used to protect line section AB, so its reach is equal to Z AB, impedance setting or reach is equal to Z AB, that is VR upon I F1 that is the this set according to the fault current magnitude at the extreme end and that fault current magnitude is symmetrical fault current magnitude. Now when a symmetrical fault current is there, it is greater than symmetrical fault current, therefore impedance measured by the relay due to a symmetrical fault current is less than that of impedance measured by the relay with symmetrical fault current. So as impedance measured is less the relay is going to overreach. For example, if fault current takes point occurs at this point that is at F2 and it has a symmetrical fault current component magnitude, then if you consider on the symmetrical component, obviously at this point the magnitude of the fault current will be less, impedance measure will be more than Zn and relay is not going to operate. But if it is having DC offset of the fault current, the resultant magnitude of the asymmetrical fault current will be equal to, can be equal to the magnitude of the fault current at F1 with symmetrical component only. So, the impedance measured by the relay will become less and that can be less than the impedance setting of the relay and relay can operate. So, due to DC offset of the fault current, the relays irrespective of their type that is more relay, impedance relay or reactance relay, all the distance relays overreach due to DC offset of the fault current. Now let us find out the equation 
for transient overreach due to DC offset of the fault current. Transient overreach is given by this formula Zn dash minus Zn upon Zn into 100. Obviously, this is percentage transient overreach. Now, here Zn is Vr upon I1 F symmetrical. F1 is the fault considered at the extreme end and fault current magnitude is symmetrical. So, Zn that is reach of the relay or impedance setting is obtained by this formula Vr upon symmetrical component of the fault current when fault takes place at the extreme end. This is this relay is protecting line section AB. Now, if F2 is there, that is in section BC, in normal condition, this relay should not operate for fault F2. But if a symmetrical fault current that is symmetrical component plus DC offset and it is equal to fault current at 1 with symmetrical component. Obviously, it is same as this one, therefore, relay is going to operate. Therefore, we are finding the transient overreach. Now, this asymmetrical fault current at F2 has two components symmetrical component and DC component. So, Z and dash is obtained by this formula. So, first we have to find out. How much is the symmetrical component in this fault current? So that we have to do in this equation and we are computing Zn dash. So by computing Zn dash and Zn, we can compute the percentage transient overreach. I will take one numerical to explain this factor. So the numerical is 110 volts, 1 ampere distance relay is set to operate when there is fault current of 10 kilo amperes, CT ratio is 1000 is to 1. First part, compute the reach of the relay. Second part, for a particular location in the next section, fault occurs and DC offset is 6 kilo amperes. If relay operates for this fault, compute the overreach. Now, we refer to the same diagram as I have explained in theory. So, if fault current is 10 kilo ampere, so obviously, this 10 kilo amperes is in the primary side. CT ratio is given. That is 1000 to 1. So, in the secondary side, the current will be 10 amperes. We can find out the impedance setting of the relay. That is VR upon IR. So, 110 by 10. It is 11 ohms. So, first part is over. The reach of the relay is 11 ohms. That is Zn. Now, second part. Here, I will write three important points. The relay is operating for the fault in the next section that is overreaching due to DC offset of the fault current. Second point, therefore, impedance measured is 11 ohms or less than 11 ohms. Let us consider the extreme condition that impedance measured is 11 ohms that is the setting of the relay and hence current in the primary side is 10 kilo amperes because this 11 ohms we computed according to the 10 kilo ampere current in the primary side. However, this is asymmetrical fault current. So, 10 kilo amperes is asymmetrical fault current and in the numerical it is given that symmetrical sorry, DC offset is 6 kilo amperes. So, using these two values, we can find out how much is the symmetrical component of the fault current. So, it is 10 kilo amperes, it is 6 kilo amperes. So, symmetrical component is coming 8 kilo amperes. So, according to our formula, impedance measured at fault F2 due to symmetrical component only. It is 110 by 8, so it is 13.75 ohms. Now, this is the formula for percentage transient overreach. Zn dash minus Zn upon Zn. 13.75 minus 11 divided by 11. So, it is coming 25%. So, transient overreach is 25% in this case. Friends, if you feel this video lecture useful, please like it. Ask your friends, colleagues, your juniors to subscribe to my channel for upcoming video lectures on power system protection and high voltage engineering. If you want to make efficient and effective use of time, then read my book on time management. The link for the book is given in the description box. I have launched a useful course on the Udemy for the students, especially for the students who are preparing for entrance exam and competitive exam. Meditation techniques are also given in that course to calm down your mind and increase the efficiency of your brain and mind. 
The link for the course is also given in the description box. Thank you.